This is the first episode of Beta Design here at Websites for Beginners. I am JP and within this series, we are going to see if we can, well, design better. This is especially for people with no background in design or especially people who's never made a website in their life and they want to understand a few key concepts. I'm going to try and speak as little as possible, keep the video short so that you can learn and just get you know, compact information, not too much mumbo jumbo. If I start rambling on, because when it comes to things like photography, images, design, I can ramble on too much. Let me know in the comments below. And hopefully then at the end after everything, you've learned a little bit. So this is really from beginners and I will add information in every episode. So I'm not going to dump everything in one go on you, give you a lot of terminology, concepts and ideas. I'll interspace them during the episodes and add a little bit here and add a little bit there. So let's jump right in. And today we are going to design this. Now, what is this? What you see here is what we refer to as a Euro image or a Euro banner or sometimes just a Euro section or a Euro block. And a Euro image block section, whatever you want to call it, usually draws the attention of a visitor most of the times with an image. But before we get to the image, and the reason why I don't include the image from the beginning, it can be very distracting. Sometimes I'll work with a client and they will tell me, oh, I have this image. And they are so excited about the image, they don't understand how it's going to fit onto the page, but they insist you have to use this image. So when you have this big section at the top of a website, we refer to that as the Euro section or the Euro block. This is page builder agnostic, if we can phrase it like this, we are not going into specific page builders here, though I will be using the same one throughout this series. And the idea is that anything I do here and everything you can do in any page builder on the market, the type, the topography, the layout, the padding, the margins, the pixels, all of those things are consistent throughout all page builders. And maybe here and there your settings are going to change a little bit, but at the end, they're all going to be the same. Let's look then at this Euro image and this Euro banner that we will be creating, which typically goes at the top of your web page, but it may also be in other parts of your web page. The first thing we want to focus on here is the fact that we are working with a block or a section. In website design, we use these areas to define the page. Some page builders call it a section, some call it a block. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. And when you design a Euro image, it takes up an entire section or a block. You do not make it part of a block, it is the block, it is the section. Here in the middle, we have our heading. Now, I'm using the word heading now from the beginning because I often make the mistake of using the word header. Now, the problem with that is that a header in website terminology is the area at the top of your page where your menu is. So we have to distinguish between a heading, ING, and a header, ER. When you have text on a page that is like a paragraph title, then it is your heading. The heading draws the attention so you can see we use a very bold font, a font with thick lines so that it can be read very easily. We also put it in all caps, uppercase, so that it also draws more attention when your visitor comes to your site. Underneath that, we have a subheading, or often you can call it also a tagline. This is a little bit of extra information. I have the opinion that people don't read. This is my, my go-to standard when I work on any document, is that people don't read. They first look at video, then they look at images, then they look at headings, and maybe after that they will read. I want to qualify what I just said. I said people don't read, but if they read, they read very, very carefully. So when you work with text, Make sure that whatever text you use is the bare necessity. Don't say too much and unnecessary stuff because it may just backfire. The one thing though I want you to note, and this is where a lot of newcomers make a huge mistake, is this area over here. 
We refer to the space between various elements as negative space or white space. In fact, there are five areas of negative space, white space here. We have that one. Then over here we have a second. We have a third. And then actually we have two here. You'll be asking me why I didn't include these here on the left and the right. And the reason I didn't is because I'm working on a very high resolution screen, which means my screen will display these areas on the left and the right. If you work on a small laptop, for example, it will not display these areas. So the higher resolution screen you have, you have to keep in your mind that these areas on the left and the right won't display all the way on low resolution screens. So if it were a low resolution screen I'd be working on, the size of that screen will be something like this. And that is why I add these two as negative space so you can have an idea that even on the left and the right, you have to apply some space, otherwise things just don't look good. And you'll hear me talk a lot about negative and white space, that areas that you have to include, otherwise things look cramped, when they look cramped, they look like a website from 1995, and that just doesn't work today in the day and age we work. So enough terminology for today. Let's go design this hero banner here, and then we will turn the hero banner into something really, really cool. Something with a great image in the background that really pops out when people come to your site. Go into the page builder, add a new block or a section. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the color of the background. And this is a very simple hex code. I love this. It's 383838. So you will see, I just type it from memory. And it's a very nice gray as well. That gives you a little bit between black and between white. The next thing I'm going to do is add that negative space to the top and the bottom immediately. And what I do here is I'm going to increase it to 160 pixels and the same for the bottom. Right, so there we go to 160. I'm going to delete one of these columns. I'm only going to work with a single column. And what I want to do is restrict this column and make it a little bit narrower. Currently for the display width, we say it's a hundred percent all the way from left to right. So I'm going to cut about 30% out of that and make it 70% off the display width. So I'll go here to my settings and then for the width, I'll put it at 70%. You will see it goes smaller. Now that is more or less the area that I want to work with. The first element we want to bring in is a text element. So you go look for your text and bring in text, and this will become our header. I'll change the color first so I can see what's going on, put it on white, and then I'll bring in some random text. Now the random text that we most often use is called lorem ipsum. If you want to know about lorem ipsum, it's Latin text that was made many, many years ago. And in fact, it's actually not random. It actually means a few things. I like to use this website called lorumipsum.io and the reason is I can generate more than one paragraph. I'm really tired of the very normal sentence of lorum ipsum dollar setamet. So what I'll do is I will generate a longer text for me and then I will just go to the bottom and grab some text just to make it and spice it up a little bit. The other thing that I've also started doing if you are looking for text that you can use on the site is to go to gutenberg.org. Now this is nothing to do with WordPress. Gutenberg.org keeps all these books that has gone into the public domain, very, very old books. So for example, here I have the text of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And all of this is open domain, so public domain. You can use it. You don't have to give contribution to it. You don't have to pay anyone anything. It is free to use. You can even sell it if you get somebody who wants to buy it from you. So I often use this kind of text as well for placeholder text. Just make sure you don't use anything offensive in there. So I copy some lorem ipsum text and I'm going to paste it here. The font that we will use for this one is called Yeseva one. I have really grown to like this font. Because we are working with a main heading, which is the one that we want to pop out, I'm going to increase the size of this one all the way up to 60. 
By default, page builders come in with a line height often set between 1.4 to 1.8. The problem with that is it's good for paragraphs, but it doesn't work for headings. Headings, you need it to be a little bit more concise. You don't need all this space. You see from this line one to this line two, the line height is the space that is applied between these two lines. So by default, when I work with a heading, I will reduce it all the way to one. Sometimes you'll have to give it a 1.2 when you work with a heading or a 1.1. It depends on how it looks and it also will depend a lot on the font. The other thing you can do is you can apply some letter spacing. This is also very common in headings. In this case, I'm going to leave it at zero. Then next, let's go and center align it. And that's done. Now we are done with this part. Let's bring in the second text element. And again, I recommend that even your page builder can do everything in one element. I would recommend go for two. It gives you more control, especially when you go to responsive design for your tablet and your mobiles. Let's go to add elements, look for our text and drop it below this one. And again, I'm going to first change it and put it on white. Going to select all the text, paste my lorem ipsum. Let me just get this right and let's style it. I'm going to put this on a good old favorite, Lato, Lato. And we leave the size at 16, weight we can put on light and the line height 1.7. It doesn't affect this much. And the only thing we're going to do is center align it. And we are almost done. As we click out, we start looking at this space between our heading and our subheading. For newcomers, you will think it looks good. But trust me, whenever in doubt, add space. If you think, for example, is this Euro banner big enough and you are not sure, then you just go ahead and you add more space. You can't go wrong by adding more space. Rather add more space than having things cramp. I'm just going to undo that. Oops. And then to add space, there are many ways you can do it. My preferred method is to add a spacer or a divider between these two where I have more control. So I bring in a spacer element and I drop it between these two. Now I think it's a little too much. So what I'll do is I'll put it on about 20 to 25 pixels. Good. And there our first Euro banner is done. If you can master this part, then you can start adding in images and it will look good. Before we add the image, very important, let's go look at how this will display on a tablet and then also on a cell phone. Go to your mobile responsiveness on a tablet and we see it is more cramped. So what we do is we add more space at the top. I'm going to bring this to around, let's say, 120 pixels. And then also at the bottom, I'm also going to add about the same amount. Let's drag it down a little bit, a little bit less. Let's reduce the font size a tad. Currently we're at 60. Let's take it down to 36. That looks much better. And I think here for the spacer, yeah, I think that looks okay. And then for our subheading, we leave it as is. So you can see it already looks pretty good. Just think I want to check the letter spacing. Okay, put it on, let's put it on one, something like that. Good. Let's hop on over to mobile. Right. We also have the same problem here. Text is way too big. Let's first change the text. Just want a letter spacing first. I see there's a little bit glitch in there. And then we put this on 24 pixels. That's a little bit more eligible. But on our cell phone device, we need more spacing. So I'm going to grab here at the top and add a lot of space. Same at the bottom, about 160 pixels. For the bottom, you can add a little bit less, maybe. Let's make it 140. Right. And I think the rest looks good. I actually think we can increase the text size. Let's see. Right. Much better. What is that? 30 pixels. And now we have set everything. It looks good on mobile. It looks good on our tablet and on desktop. Very nice hero banner. Let's put it into real action by bringing in our image now. So you bring in the background image for your block in your section. I'm going to grab this one. And there's an overlay applied that I just want to remove. And then I just want to put my focus point to make sure this part always remains in focus when it loads. 
Here comes a big problem. And this is a very common problem that you see on websites. You do not see the text. And there are many ways to fix this. In this case, the only thing we're going to do is make the text dark. So we're going to make it black. I'll click on it and then let's just grab black, which is triple zero, triple zero. And same for this one. This text here is still too light, very difficult to read. So let's use a different font weight and weight will increase the thickness of the line. I'm going to put it on bold, much better to read. You have to do the same for the other two. Let's go to tablet and see how it looks. Right, that's fine. And then on mobile, it also looks pretty good. And that's our first Euro banner. Let's save our work and then we go view it on the front end, test it a little bit for mobile responsiveness to make sure that it works properly. And that's our first image for better design. It's looking good, Peter. I like it. So let's see how this will display on a tablet. That looks good. Let's also see it in landscape mode. Nothing we can complain about there. And then the one that we always have to test is Apple iPhone X. I see I have to play around a little bit up here. That looks pretty good. Maybe we can change the focal point a little bit more to the left here. And if somebody were to view it in landscape, it will also look very good. One of the devices I also like to check it on is this one called Laptop S, which is a very narrow display. And the reason I do that is for those areas on the left and the right that I had showed you at the beginning of this video. If you had made your design too wide, this display will show you how it will look on a smaller laptop. Is it cut off? Do you need to add more padding? or does it display correctly? And in this case, because we have limited our text to 70%, you remember I put it on 70% of the whole width, it looks pretty good and you still have that Euro image display. Great stuff. Hope this kickstarts a good series for better design. See you again next Saturday for episode number two.